Hello, it's Chris. And today I thought I'd do a video uh, to do with art and expression and talking. I've been talking, doing a few of these videos about talking about kind of contemporary masculinity. What is masculinity in the modern contemporary age? How is it changing? How is it evolving? How is it getting worse? How is it getting better? Blah, 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 blah. So I thought I'd do <coughs> something in that, <coughs> in that realm to do with art, visual art, basically. It's actually just exclusively visual art. So, I'm going to start by talking. Because masculinity is a funny thing like in terms of like how do you define it? Because obviously we're living in an age where all of these um, you know, genders being deconstructed just like any set of ideas, right? That's, that's where philosophically, in terms of gender and roles that's where that's the sort of whether um the culture's gone to you know sort of deconstruction of gender gender as a social construct as opposed to it you know being something that's hardwired when obviously in truth it's really always going to be a mixture of both of some some uh, some you know aspects of masculine or feminine behavior are hardwired some of them are like constructed or culturally created values that you've just inherited you know like how to present like for example like i'm a man obviously i've got a beard which is a obviously a masculine signifier you know but beyond that i still i'm not really that masculine in general my clothes are generally masculine dark sort of neutral tone colors and obviously not much pinks and stuff <laughs> it's not really my color but i did once have a, a t-shirt with pelicans on that's about as far as i go Oh, it was a pelican, no, whatever, the, the little pink things. But anyway, like purple, I'm more like purple, really. See, I'm even doing it here. I was like, I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely don't like the colour pink, that's probably why. I had to do one painting once with pink on it, and I, I had my hand forced. My painting hand was forced by my sister-in-law to do that. Anyway, I don't know what that is, but I don't know whether that's actually coming from... Uh, a place of like truth, or if that's just something I decided not to like because it's like a girl and whatever, you know what I mean? So, so I want to, uh, everyone has a complex relationship with this shit, I guess. Um, I don't tend to, I don't, I don't place much importance in all honesty on being a man. I mean, what, what does it matter? Like, if you actually look at uh, human beings, then yes, obviously, there are genetic differences between male and women, there are biological differences, and all that. But we have to get along, we have to exist, coexist. There are differences probably in the, between the way our brain works, certain cliches about multitasking and being very focused. But then, obviously, no, you can't, you can't reduce anything down to a generalization or a cliche, right? Anyway, all that bollocks out of the way. Um, on to some art stuff. So I wanted to talk about uh, a few famous painters that might come into your mind when you think about masculinity and art. Now, the first one I want to mention is bloody obvious, Picasso. Because Picasso's art and his masculinity, I think, were intrinsically tied. Well, let's have a look at why. Uh, most of his subjects were women. Well, not most, that's even, with, I should rephrase that. A lot of his subjects, a lot of his main subject matter was the women in his life. His muses, uh, Marie Therese, or whether we don't know, Marie Therese, etc, etc. It was his, a lot of his, one of his primary subjects was his muse, his lover or lovers at the time. And he would be, it would be what they call a male gaze, so he was looking at female sex, sexuality, body, form, through the male gaze, through the eyes of a man. Now this is obviously something that's happened a lot in visual art history. Um, you know, you've, you've had male artists, because Painting has traditionally, I mean, there is a lot of uh, re-examining art history now and sort of reappraising the place of women in art history, which is a good thing, obviously. But traditionally, it's been, like a lot of systems of power, it's been a patriarchal system where you have the collectors or the, but that's primarily to do with how power has been structured uh, across generations of basically just male power. Now, the reasons for that, I mean, I think basically the reason is obviously men are more competitive um, just by nature. It's like it's hardwired into us somehow. 
Um, so because of that, I think, and then, and if, and then see, if you do look at the history of civilized, civilization up to this point, it is basically I mean, from tribes having conflicts with each other, which have often required violence, men are physically stronger than women. That's just going to happen, so you're going to have... That's where patriarchy, I guess, emerges from, right? Like, so... It, you could argue it's less relevant now, blah, 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 but whatever. I'm going off track a bit there. So, yeah, I mean, Picasso, he, he is often uh, framed as a misogynist sometimes these days. He's been re-examined under that lens of, you know, was he a misogynist? You know, he wasn't exactly faithful to his women. He was, I guess, like a bigamist, right? And also... But then, when you actually think about that, like, it's, it's almost like... Um, I'm not... I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I don't know if this actually has any validity. But people always go on now about being polyamory, being all this, like really, almost like, it's almost tied in with the idea of wokeness in some respects. And I am probably misusing the term a bit there in context of what I'm discussing, but you do like see some people who are, I mean, fair enough, want to be polyamorous, so go for it, whatever, knock yourself out. But you do see some sort of, like there's some sort of contradiction there. If you're going to accuse a historical artist who's dead now of being a misogynist, whereas you know poly uh, polyamory is all like you know, super progressive or whatever, I mean, what's the you know? I don't know. I'm trying to make some sort of point there. I'm probably failing. I'm just this is just going to be rambling. Videos going to be one of them. So yeah, Picasso. Picasso. That's, that's that's essentially his his idea of masculinity is the minotaur really so uh, his one of his yeah most famous icons that appears in his painting is the minotaur the figure of the minotaur it's his, it's a a vessel if you will for his masculine lib libidinal energy you know so that, you know like I mean, what's libido I mean basically essentially for the, in the masculine sense it's your balls it's like how it's your sexual energy it's your sexual drive it's your how your sexuality expresses itself <coughs> in the world, in society, with individuals, you know, it's like, it's just ball energy, big balls energy, right? And um, Picasso did certainly have big balls energy. This also did mean that he could, was arguably an asshole as well. Uh, you can tie that in however you want, but people do tend to think of him as a bit of an asshole. But then, you could argue that the people who win in life are, have the right level of asshole I don't know. This is an interesting one. Put this one in the chat. I don't want to discuss it. What's the right level of asshole? The perfect spicy uh, ratio of being an asshole to being sound like. Because, I mean, by sound, I mean like, you know, nice. You know, a, a person who tries to be agreeable. I actually think there is merit in being disagreeable, to be honest. Not for the sake of it, obviously. That's pointless. That's just being a contrarian dick. But... I do think there is, and I think artists are generally disagreeable types, actually. If you want to like look at it through the lens of, uh, well, you have to be, actually. So I'll talk a bit more from my own personal experience. Like, I'm a painter, I'm an artist of, of types. I've had to just keep on doing that, despite many people trying to dissuade me from doing it. Because I'm a disagreeable person, I'm an individualist. That's my personality type is actually... I've done tests on this and that. So basically a lone wolf individualist, very disagreeable nature as well. So I'm not just going to say yes. I'm not easily, you know, persuaded to um, direct my will, if you will, towards someone else's will, unless they can logically lay it out for me. Then I'll go with it. Yeah, I'm sure that makes sense. But otherwise I'm very individualistic, right? In terms of my own art, this would be interesting to explore. I'll probably put a few pictures up of So... Uh, how is masculinity found expression in my art? So this actually, interestingly enough, is in two different ways, I think, primarily. One is a certain vulnerability, that's either when I'm uh, portraying myself or other men, men that I've done portraits of. I tend to choose um, portraits of men who aren't, um, who are sort of outsiders in one way or the other. Uh, I guess because I'm a bit of an outsider myself, so there's a certain level of identification there. But I, I am more drawn to male subjects when it comes to portraying men who are, in one way or the other, outsiders or uh, outside of society in one way or the other. I think these men are just more interesting than, you know, like, very, I mean, successful men are obviously interesting as in terms of, like, subjects as well because 
There's just a different personality there, there's a different we'll set of uh, visual. There's a different visual mood to portray, um, right, as a painter. It's a different challenge. Women who are uh, outside of like the usual social, I don't know, still in the social hierarchy, whatever can be interesting. That's definitely something I'm enjoying too. The other side of the high expression masculinity. Um, now this is going to be quite hard to explain, and it probably won't make sense to many people, especially not women, because I don't think they can really. Uh, you can't know what I'm really talking about unless you are a man. But that is the monkey mind. Now, what is monkey mind? And uh, monkeys are alright, but this is just the, the phrase I use to describe the state of mind. This is like the testosterone that exists within our bodies, right? Which which produces aggression and violence. And the monkey mind is the word I've used to describe the, the mental mindset of this. It is... I, I always thought of it like there's that Meshuggah video, right? Where there's that like weird blood god on the, on the throne who's like the the masculine violence exists within men, right? Now, <clears throat> this is like the dark side of masculinity, obviously. So this is the toxic part of it. It's the it's the inner violence that exists within men. And I, now I see this as a bit like in that obscene bleed video from Meshuggah. I see it as this sort of like, you know, death figure really it's like the dark side of ma masculinity and i guess women have that as well but you know it's more like a sort of like cutting queen or whatever like in the same video actually it's the same thing there's a lot of um castration symbology in that video actually for bleed because there's there's this and that obviously if you want to you know obviously freud covered this up you know covered this up he <laughs> covered this in his work you know the whole thing of like that's m m men's main primal fear because a lot of their, their you know, libido, the prom, the drive, everything is connected to their cocks. I mean, stating the obvious, but like, we, they are, but the thing is with cocks, it's like, we're, we're almost like taught to almost be like, like portray like, uh, we're like a strong, uh, uh, fucking massive cock, uh, but the reality of it is, unless your dick is like erect, uh, or whatever, like it's vulnerable, like it's an extremely vulnerable piece of anatomy, right? It can be damaged very easily, and if it does, and it's it's it will live cocks of, you know, like <laughs> sort of vulnerable, you know, and most of them aren't like huge bombers, you know, as well. But uh, anyway, there's like a huge thing with that, obviously, and it's connected to that in terms of like male psychology in general. In terms of my own work, yeah, like I explore that, I explore the dark side of <laughs> masculinity, but also also the, the the dark side of femininity too, and how that can be used as an attack on masculinity in general so like ha the, the sort of like the back and forth between the dark side and the dark side of masculinity and femininity and how they interact with each other basically there's a lot of my work that's explored that uh something i enjoy ah that's i just may as well get a few paintings at what i'm doing with, so. this is more like sexual so that's like a siren painting i call it when i did that not long ago no exactly it's the alluring side of female sexuality that really but um, yeah, obviously I think it's it's very positive to explore these areas in in uh, in a painting practice. You're externalising something that exists within all men anyway, and it's better than actually being you know obviously violent or destructive in real life. I think that's one actually one of the powers of art that most people can't really or don't realise if they don't actually actively engage it, which is the fact that uh, if you have a uh, difficult emotional issues to work through or difficult traumas or maybe you were abused yourself then you can a lot there's actually been a history of a few quite a few arts actually have been very either emotionally and physically abused and they use art as a as a way to work through all that shit right and that is there's there's probably a lot of benefit in doing that i think i mean i think for myself like i i I don't really, I mean, I have some traumas, obviously, like, I'm not trauma-free myself, but I have never, I've, I've led a relatively privileged right life, right, I've never been beaten, or I've never, you know, I'm also a man, so I could probably take it a bit more, like, if a woman has beaten me or something, it's like, and what, like, you know, and what, <laughs> well, I've, actually, I won't go too deep into this, but I have had that experience, to be fair, and it's like, 
Uh, it doesn't physically, it doesn't, but it's not. You're not like, and what, what, what of it? <laughs> you just know it doesn't hurt, but emotionally, it probably does a bit of damage for sure. That's probably a subject for a whole other thing, and I'm not going to go too deep into that because it's old shit from years ago. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, obviously, it's good for auto therapy. Art can be one of the best methods of auto therapy for real. It can help if you're a man and you're working with that fucking deaf demon dark side of maleness then I'd, I'd recommend art because it's a good way to work through that shit and get over it and realise that uh, you know because one of the worst things I think you can do as any as a human being is start hating half the planet because of your own failures with them which obviously happens a lot more in like terms of the, the incel culture now which has moved online and the, the, the incel black pill and all that stuff which is the thing is, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. If you start going on about how you hate half the species, then none of one's going to be attracted. That's not attractive, is it? So, no one's going to be attracted to you by definition. Well, maybe maybe that's actually a good um, auto therapy for incels, actually. Work through it. Like, I don't know, maybe you are an incel, you're watching this, you know, one of the black pill incel guys. Just fucking draw it out like draw out whatever the this dark energy is this resentment energy and just explore it you don't have to be sharing it with people do a diary or something it's not a bad idea look i'm not an incel myself look, I'm just, i think there's probably going to be a bit of confusion with some of the content on my channel because i've gone about black pill but i mean in the broader perspective of pessimism as a, as a world philosophy i don't like black pill philosophy it's obviously toxic and horrible i'm not into it so yeah, I just thought I'd clarify that. I'm not into the black pill or the incel subculture. I'm just basically just mentioning that because I think potentially if anyone is struggling with some shit, I might help them through it a bit. Like I said, not with the intention to show necessarily, just just as a form of auto therapy. Probably will be quite useful for some people like that, I guess. Um, I'll probably wrap this up. Uh, I've only really mentioned some of the most obvious artists like... Um, I mean, you could, I could mention them, like Kokoschka, this sort of a Kirsten is quite an interesting one, especially if you relate that back to what I was saying about the castration complex with, because there's one painting where he has a pain, it's actually to do with his nervous breakdown after the war, it's lost his arm, uh, it's often described as a sort of self castration painting, and that's, he's like walking away from, I guess, women, naked women, maybe prostitutes, he's got, it's in his other two uniforms, he's got his hand chopped off, which I've always found a very riveting, powerful, image for how um, our sense of self can be destroyed in that way, especially being exposed to like having post-traumatic stress from actual combat um, environment, you know, like because that violence, like I said, exists, the potential for it exists within us, doesn't mean we have to go out there and start going, oh. it's not like, it's not something stupid like this, but it is something that exists within our minds, like in our bodies even. We are built, we aren't built, but we're, we have evolved to be physical beings who compete with each other as men, and that's just the, the reality, right? And you have to focus that energy somewhere, otherwise, you know, so it can, oh, it can destroy you. I mean, it can become inverted almost, I guess. Anyway, that's probably enough of that. I probably might do another video on this, I could probably expand on it, so. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any thoughts of your own, I don't.